the wild horses couldn't drag me away from. This, believe it or not, is our last Sunday on this book, Living Beyond Belief. Is that unbelievable? <laughs> 22 chapters, golden chapters of awakening. For those of you who have been following it, this has been like a dream come true for a minister to get this much rich and incredibly powerful teachings. Thank you, our teacher, Alice Gardner, for all that she brought in helping us be awake to what? The lasting and ending where we began. We're beginning now with the chapter, the two chapters on love. We, we start in love, we have a few moments in time where we experience love, and then we end in love. We're coming from love. These last two chapters are about a love that we literally are coming from and we awaken to that love and that oneness. That's all that the whole lifetime is about, to awaken to the love that we truly are. The love that knows no boundaries or limits. We start off with our Bible quote, or should I say our quotes from several wonderful people. The first one is from William Blake. We are put on earth a little space we only have a few moments in time here. Do you know that? There's a little dash between when you are born and the dash and then when you die. You have a little tiny space here. No one knows when that last date is going to be put up on that tombstone call your life. No one knows when their earth visa is going to be pulled. I don't care how much you say you know. We get a little tiny space, a little moment in time. For what? That we may learn to bear the beams of love. Do you feel that? to feel that beam of love moving through you. And what is that love? Chardin said, love is an animating energy pulsating through the universe, the supreme spiritual energy linking all elements and persons in their irreplaceable and incommunicable essence in a universal process of unification. Say amen. amen. Said more simply by Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, love is the binding, harmonizing, unifying power in all of this universe. It holds everything together. We can let that go right now. It is the, the force of energy we call love. It's in everything. It doesn't die, it is forever. It is the thing that holds the very atoms and cells of your being together in oneness. That is what you are. Isn't that exciting? And so when we awaken to that love consciously, more of those radiant beams of love and light and glory can move through us with effortless ease, joy, and grace. A man having an experience of that talks about it in a very old book. He has an awakening into love's presence. His name is British author Sir Francis Young Husband. And he said this while standing on top of the Himalayas. He had this experience. I had a curious sense of being literally in love with the world. There's no other way in which I can express what I then felt. I felt as if I could hardly contain myself for the love which was bursting within me. It seemed as if the world itself were nothing but love. At the back and foundation of all things, I was certain was love. Not merely placid benevolence, but an active, fervent, devoted love and nothing less. The whole world seemed in a blaze of love, and men's heart were burning to be in touch with one another. That burning, blazing presence of God, the love that is within us, is what we're here to express and give and extend forth to other people. That love is what we are. God is that love. I am that love. Feeling that love, knowing that love is why we are here. I had a, a direct experience and encounter with that kind of love unexpectedly. You know how you have these unexpected, surprising moments? It was Wednesday. We were doing a memorial service for Joan Lopez. Lopez. Uh, many of you were here for that. Some of you were. And we were told very clearly, because we were with the family throughout the whole process, that what Joan wanted was no memorial service. She didn't want anybody making a speech. She didn't want any prayer. She just basically wanted to have a visitation at the church. So I, after 32 years of learning what people want, want to give them what they want most, and that's what they wanted. So I, I let go of the idea of any kind of form to it. It was going to be on Wednesday from 4 to 6 o'clock, come and visit the family and leave. So when I showed up 
uh, I was in very relaxed mode because I wasn't going to really be on. I was going to be one of the many people who were going to be part of just being there present and, and giving my condolences to the family, connecting with them. And when I came into this room, it was blazing with radiant beams of love and light and glory. Something was astir in the room. What everybody thought was going to happen was not what was going to happen. And CJ came running down the aisle towards me and said, get ready, you're on, work your magic. Come on down, here's what we're doing. We're gonna have, well, we're gonna have some openings by you. We're gonna have this minister who's from hospice give an opening prayer. We're gonna do some sharings and then you're gonna close it up. I said, oh, you mean we're having a memorial service? <laughs> yes, and go do it, you're on, you're on, go, go, go. And so I had to go from my mind made self and my agenda of that not being on to all of a sudden being completely on. Had anybody noticed that these times you're being called upon in a moment to change your focus from yourself, me, myself, and I, my own agenda, to a larger agenda? Is anyone noticing that? It happens almost instantaneously where you've got to step out of yourself and allow yourself to merge with something much bigger and much greater. So I started off and I told the story of just a few days ago when we went to go visit Joan in her room in hospice. She had not actually done a whole lot of moving or talking for a couple of days. We were told that she was very quiet. And Maureen and I walked into the room and went over to her bed. And her dear friend Mary said, Richard and Maureen are here. And she popped up in bed and threw out her arms like this and embraced both of us. It was a moment of radiant, blazing light and love and glory. And we got to be a part of that. We got to experience that. And what ended up happening was everyone in that room began to share a story, not unlike that one, where Joan had touched them in their lives. Ways in which the, 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 the son and the daughter-in-law, they only knew them in a certain context. Do you know how your family only knows you in a certain context? They don't know the effect that you have on people. They don't know the things that people think about you. They don't know how you touch people's hearts. They don't know the miracles that you perform every day by just being alive in the body. They're not aware of it. And most of the time, none of us are until the memorial service. I make a call. No waiting for the memorial service. Okay? Let's begin to know what's true about us right now and not wait till the end to know what we knew in the beginning. Let's get it in the space in between. Yes? Amen to that. Amen. Let's begin to establish ourselves in what is always forever true, not later, not after, but now, to know that about ourselves. You say, well, my life's not very big. I'm not very important. I don't make that kind of difference in the world. I'm telling you that you do, particularly if you're involved with these teachings. There'll be people saying amazing things about what they learned from you. The son, who didn't really want there to be any kind of service, stood up and he was saying, my mom always wanted to be a school teacher and never got to be that. But she was my teacher. And I can see from all of you in this room that she was your teacher as well. She taught everyone about love. That's what we're here to do to teach that love, to share that love, to give that love. That's what this is all about, returning to. It is an awakening just so I can feel the kundalini and the chills and the bliss. And I love all of that stuff, to feel that in my body. It is about the love that you extend to others, because that's what continues to go on. That is present love, and it's right here and right now, and you can be even more of an extension and expansion of it. How you do it? is a constant being willing to look at your mind-made self, my ego self, my separate self, and step out of the way. To let go of your own agenda of how you think things are supposed to be. And if they're not the way you want them to be, then you're just not going to be happy. You're going to run around with this, I'm not getting what I want, me, myself, and I. And here's this beautiful universe around you, celebrating and dancing in love, and you're like, I'm not getting what I want, it's not working for me. Why am I so tired every day? You don't need to be. There's an animating presence of love that will move forth through every cell and atom of your being. It holds the universe together. It's not constricted by time and space or bodies. It's the universal essence of love, which created me, which of course in miracles says, is what I am. We are literally removing 
all of the blocks to the awareness of what's always been here. And what you get when you get it is, all of the love that I've been looking for is the love I'm already coming from, and I just wasn't aware of it. Don't wait to your memorial service to accept it. Because <laughs> you will be floating around while people are celebrating your life and going, oh my god, it really was all about love. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I know it now at the Thanksgiving table. I'm going to pretend that I know it while in traffic. She gives this example. It seems to be a universal place where the mind-made self takes over, right? Traffic. You're going from A to B. You do it dozens of times a week. You know how long it takes to go from A to B. Sometimes it's a minute or two longer or a minute or two less, but it takes that amount of time, depending upon traffic, to go from A to B. So she says, I'm sitting in a car uh, in my hopefully awakened state, and I'm noticing that there's someone in front of me that has two cars in front of them, and this person, man, woman, is texting on the phone. And I know what's going to happen. The light is going to change. And this person is not going to move. So I'm going to, in an awakened way, tap, and then this person is going to finally get it and move through the light, just in time for me to get stuck at the light. And there's the mind made self, filled with tension, because you had to wait for another light. As if your getting from A to B is more important than somebody else's getting from A to B. When we have practices, where we're trying to establish ourselves in beams of love and light and glory, we just go, oh, look, that one again. <laughs> Does it really matter if I'm 28 seconds there sooner than I would have been if I didn't make a big deal about this light? And please understand, I do this all the time. A practice allows you to not continually keep repeating the same thing over again and expecting different results. I'll be happy if I get through all the lights. No, you won't be. <laughs> it's the journey getting there. How do you want to arrive? That's the work that we're doing. If you arrive with a sense of open presence and being in the flow, then the radiant beams of love and light can move through you, and you can do what you need to do with a sense of ease and grace rather than holding on real tight. There's nothing like a good, hot, fire in relationship with another human being with flesh on to help you see where your mind-made self gets active and reactive. Right? Tell all those other people. That's the difficult part. And so I, I, and children can do that too. You have your own little agenda. You think how your life's going to go. You met your wife many years ago before there were many children involved, and you thought you were just going to have this great me, myself, and I relationship with this other, yeah, me, myself, and I, and everything was going to go great. And then you make the big mistake of having children. And you realize that your life has nothing to do with you at all. It's about someone else that you have to be in service to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's called life in a body. And you have to continually keep melting away the edges of your mind-made self. She says in this book, it's about looking at your sense of self-importance over and over and over again. It's all about me, myself, and I. When I met Maureen, uh, what, 41 years ago, it was all about me, myself, and I. I was the middle of a child of two sisters. She was the oldest of 11. The first time I went to her house, the first weekend where I went to see the place where she came from, she had 11 brothers and sisters, of which she's the oldest there. They had all had 10 friends over, and there were six adults in the room. There were literally 35 people in this room. And I'm going, oh my God, I'm freaking out to all these people. And Maureen is sitting in the middle of all of this energy, and she is in existence, consciousness, and bliss. And I said to myself, this is going to be trouble. <laughs> I'm going to have to let a lot of my mind-made edges be let go of to be able to establish myself into a relationship with this person. To where now 40 years later, 41 years later, I'm not that person anymore, nor is she the person that always needs to be in the middle of everyone's business, although she's very good at it. She's good at getting out of the way. And I mean in a good way. She's good at stepping out of the way. She's okay saying, you know what, this is not mine. I don't need to be in the middle of this. And I've seen her do this dozens and dozens of times. We've learned from each other. We've melted the edges of our mind-made self. She calls it a kind of softening process that you go through. 
You get softer. Remember I talked about the prisoners in the talk about serving life a bunch of Sundays ago? Watching them in, in the presence of people dying, they got softer. They got more open. They got more presence. That's what we're here for. And the more that you continue to do that, the more, more of those radiant, animated, living beams of love and light can move through you. And we live in times now where the doorway to that energy is open wide. We've been in times like this before. That's why there's so many wonderful, amazing awakenings happening and so many people who are freaking out right now. Do you notice that? The line is very thin because the energy is being amped up. It's like we're really 220 volt beings and we've been running around pretending we're 110 volt and the energy has been amped up from on high and now everybody's every mind-made self thing inside of you is now up. And if you're resisting what's going on now, if you're fighting it, then you'll become more and more freaked out and more angry and more judgmental than you've ever been before. And I say, if you're doing a path of awakening, good, notice it. But if you're willing to participate in these beams of love and light and glory, they'll begin to lift you up to places in consciousness you have not been able to imagine for yourself. And it's very particular. She says, when you begin to do this work, you begin to open yourself up to the miracle of anything can happen. I don't know, but anything can happen. And then all possibilities open up to you. The universe begins to respond to you. You begin to find yourself more and more at the right place, at the right time, with the right people, doing exactly what needs to be done. Or you find yourself choosing not to be with those people and not to keep doing what you've been doing. And you make a clear choice that I'm not doing this anymore. That's what this work is about. You become so present with each moment as best as you can, you begin to realize that everything you do matters, every choice you make has a difference of the kind of energy that's going to be needed out through you, the kind of love that's going to run through your being, and you realize it's unlimited. There are no restrictions or restraints on love's presence expressing and extending through you, none whatsoever, except as your own mind chooses to see it as such, yes? That's what we're here to do. So we're going to take a look at our lesson summation for a moment right now and remember what we've talked about. And we are put on earth a little space that we may learn to bear the beams of love. When you just feel that beam of radiant love moving through you, there's an immediate sense of oneness with other people. When I sat in that room and listened to people talk about Joan at her memorial service, what I was experiencing were the beams of radiant love moving forth through each person's mouth and heart as they experienced love. We were no longer separate individuals who didn't know each other. We were one being being present in love. That's what we were. That love was there. It was real. And everyone in that room for a moment suspended their judgments. We remembered what was most important. You don't need to wait to your memorial service to begin to accept that for yourself now. Every day is your memorial service. What do you want to remember? If you want to remember who you are, you'll get a lot of support in that. So I read this at everyone's memorial service. I hope you'll read it at mine. It talks about the love that has no end and no beginning, and it really has nothing to do with the body, but while you're in one, it expresses through it. So it goes like this. When I die, when my body is no more, if you need to weep, cry for your brother or sister walking down the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you with something that is bigger than the words in this book or any book or any workshop you'll ever go to. Here it is. Here it is. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you can't give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not just as a thought in your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of the children that need to be free. Love doesn't die. People do. Bodies go and come. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away, give me away, give me away. 
So we started this journey many moments ago, probably 20 Sundays ago, and we can put the next slide up if there is another one up there. And, and we literally, yes, there it is, right. We started off with, with I am always and already awake. Remember that? That was the first talk that I gave. So as you're sitting around the Thanksgiving table with those people who are your family and friends, with the ones that it's easy to love and appreciate, and with the ones that are difficult and hard. And by the way, someone's talking about the difficulty they're going to face seeing you on Thursday. <laughs> oh, she's coming again. Oh, here he comes with his metaphysics. And let's share blessings. Let's hold hands. <laughs> You know, they have the same opinion about you that you do about them. You don't necessarily need to verbalize this, but you can know before you sit down at that table, I am always and already awake, and we add in love. Let's say that together. I am always and already awake in love. And then we think of others who are with us and hold them in our hearts, and we say, you are always and already awake in love. And then we hold it for the spaciousness of all beings everywhere. We remember what's true right now. We say, we are always and already awake in love. Not a love that we get to, but one that we're coming from. And I've got one more quote that came out of my, my sharing from my actual going over it last night. And I walked into the, the room where Maureen does her computer, and I had my little brown slippers on. Remember my little brown slippers? I want to go home, I want to remember who I am. And I walked over to Maureen, and I said to her, I am a radiant being of blazing love and light and glory. She said, wow. I said, I am a radiant being of blazing love and light and glory. Say that with me. I am a radiant being of blazing love light and glory. This is not the end of the book or the story. This is the beginning of your inner glory to awakening to the love that you already are. And you don't need to wait to the end to understand it and embody it today, right here and right now. We practice not just for ourselves, but for the Thanksgiving table that literally has millions of people sitting at it. We remember what's true, and we awaken to who we are. Bless you, and have a wonderful, wonderful, happy Thanksgiving.